Upon delving into every available resource about Remoria, I stumbled upon a discovery that led me down a rabbit hole related to Arlecchino. You might be wondering, how is she related to Remoria? Discovering the melody of Vesta. If you're familiar with Roman gods, you might have noticed that the one melody we can hear from Remoria is known as the melody of Vesta, and Vesta is the goddess of the hearth. This sparked my interest, prompting weeks of research into Greek and Roman mythology, as well as Genshin's lore, in search of links and clues to decipher this connection. While I can't claim absolute certainty with my theories, there's certainly something intriguing there. Now, let's dive in. In the Echoes of the Ancient World quest, we learn that the kingdom of Remoria revolved around music and used phonetic notes as a writing system. The enchanting song we uncover is known as the Melody of Vesta, which legend says can transport people into a dreamscape. This dreamscape is likely where Remus went during his slumber, while his kingdom was governed by its harmists. Vesta, Goddess of the Hearth In real-world mythology, Vesta is the Roman goddess of the hearth, home, and family, often depicted as the eternal flame of her temple. She embodies both feminine and masculine traits, symbolized by the eternal flame and the fire stick. There's even a tale about a phallus appearing in the flames of her sacred hearth, leading to the birth of Rome's founders, Romulus and Remus. Vesta's priestesses, known as the Vestal Virgins, were responsible for safeguarding sacred objects within the temple, preparing offerings, and tending to the temple hearth. Their lives were comfortable, but their rules were incredibly strict. Since Vesta guarded the eternal flame, allowing it to extinguish was seen as her withdrawing protection from Rome, resulting in severe punishments for the priestesses. Even worse was guilt of impurity, which could lead to a horrifying fate, being buried or burned alive. Arlecchino's Parallels to Vesta This strict ruling resonates with how Arlecchino manages the House of the Hearth, but especially to do with impurity due to her role in protecting Lynette from potential harm as a child. While we don't know the full extent of the punishments Arlecchino meets out, the description from the Wanderer about her suggests punishments that sound pretty severe, too. A wolf in sheep's clothing. To exert a higher level of control over people, she puts on a graceful and cordial front. Most of those who have seen her true crazy self have gone poof. And from the latest Archon Quest in 4.1, Linny is terrified of being viewed as failing her, even at the risk of his siblings' lives. Considering Vesta's association with fire, Arlecchino also aligns perfectly with her pyro vision and her color scheme of red, black, and gray. The Hand of Glory Connection Furthermore, her constellation, which appears to be a hand holding a flame, likely draws inspiration from the Hand of Glory. The Hand of Glory was a dried hand of a criminal combined with a candle made from their fat, believed to render anyone motionless upon viewing it. It had the power to unlock any door, and could only be extinguished with milk. These characteristics align perfectly with the covert operations undertaken by Arlecchino and the House of the Hearth, enabling her to open any door and immobilize adversaries would be an incredibly useful ability and the fire of the candle could represent her pyrovision too. Arlecchino, a potential harmist. With Arlecchino possessing a pyrovision, leading the House of the Hearth, ranking fourth among the 11 Fatui Harpingers, just below the top three who are as powerful as gods and likely having similar abilities as Caterpillar, it leads me to think of her role as one of Remus's unknown harmists. As for how she was a member of the House of the Hearth recently, if she was so old, 
This can be explained as her being able to shapeshift or use illusions like Caterpillar, who chooses to appear as a child even though he's hundreds of years old. I think that rather than Arlecchino being the god Vesta, she'd fit being one of the four harmists that Remus granted divine power to, and maybe Vesta was just her name, with there being no god named Vesta in Genshin's world. Either that, or Vesta was a god Remus was able to share the power of with humans, but that gets a bit more convoluted to make sense of. Whichever path the story takes, it aligns well with Celestia viewing this act as Remus's greatest sin, as granting divine powers to a human would threaten their order and be deemed offensive. If the god kings possess powers equal to or greater than the Archons, as suggested by Deshret's apparent strength, Arlecchino would possess formidable abilities, but not the full might of a god king, which to me makes her fit into the number 4 slot of the Harbingers perfectly, above the creation of a god, but below actual god level Harbingers. Soul Transference So, why do her hands resemble caterpillars? It's possible they both underwent the same process Remus used to place the souls of his harmists into golems, as Renee's research on the Golden Troop of Remoria suggests. The two known harmists, Boethius and Cassiodor, appear to have undergone this process. If Renee lacked a golem to house Caterpillar's soul, he could have used the body of a Hillichurl instead, with the markings on Caterpillar's arms appearing due to the soul transfer process and not because he's a Hillichurl who can't hide them. If Arlecchino's soul was separated from her body, it would have been stored in the Golden Ichor before being placed into a golem. This could mean that some residual memories were left behind and mixed with the sea when Remoria fell, which could be how Carter, or Caterpillar, accidentally gained some of her memories and abilities after Rene removed his soul from his body using similar methods. The Power of Suggestion Just as Caterpillar is called a wolf in sheep's clothing like she is, Arlecchino should have the ability to influence the minds of others too, if I'm on the right track. Since I ended up in Meripede before doing the Archon quests and discovered Caterpillar's hands and powers, I was watching every little thing Arlecchino did and I'm almost positive they had the same or similar abilities. The way she talks to Farina and nearly kills her without knowing that she's basically powerless says to me that she doesn't have any fear or respect for Archons, which would fit with her being one of the unnamed Harmists of Remoria and seeing herself as above them, even if she wasn't as powerful. She communicates in a commanding manner steering conversations to her advantage and using speech as a weapon to poke holes in people's confidence. Since Remoria was a nation of the arts and Boethius had the musician title, I wonder if she was associated with the arts too. She could have been a conductor, director, actress, singer or a dancer and that could explain why her powers seem to be to get people to act their part in her play and I think I might have found a character or two that would fit as an inspiration for her. The Black Swan The ballet Swan Lake has two characters we'll be focusing on, Odette and Odile. Odette was a princess cursed by an evil sorcerer to become a swan in the day and only return to her human form at night. Prince Siegfried sees her human form and falls in love with her, but to cut a long story short, the sorcerer disguises his daughter Odile as Odette at a ball and the prince says that he loves her. Due to fairy tale logic, this means that everything is ruined, so Odette and Siegfried jump off a cliff to be together in heaven. Odette was represented by purity and water, while Odile was the opposite, as described by Joan Emery Sear, who played them both. The white swan is water, very fluid and transparent, and the black swan is fire, seductive, strong, alluring and dangerous. Assuming Arlecchino had her soul put into a golem made of black stone, it could be that she once represented the white swan Odette 
but was affected by the process as well as her newfound divine powers and became more like the black swan Odile. This transformation is represented in more modern media such as the movie Black Swan. So it might explain why she has bird feathers on her outfit as the swan maiden in many folk tales usually owns a piece of clothing with swan feathers attached to it that when stolen renders them helpless. Maybe in Arlecchino's case it has something to do with her disguise as she doesn't seem quite human. It also fits with her being similar to Natasha or Raven from Honkai Impact 3rd who owns an orphanage runs covert operations and is associated with birds. There's also something called a black swan event, which is when something massive but completely unexpected happens. Maybe something to do with her real plans being revealed. In one version of the Swan Maiden's stories, she is one of seven others who steal the golden apples from a tree in the king's garden and reminded me of a story Caterpillar told us. The Girl and the Garden the story unfolds with a girl residing in a garden cared for by a giant who built a towering wall to keep intruders away. He told the girl that the outside world was dangerous and that the garden was the safest place to live. One day, a witch appeared and persuaded the girl to pick some of the garden's purple flowers which the giant had denied the witch previously. The witch claimed that she needed the flowers to heal her sick friend so, feeling sorry for her, the girl gathered a bunch and was carried over the wall on a gust of wind conjured by the witch. After handing over the flowers, the girl looked back to find the garden had vanished. When she asked to return, the witch posed a chilling question, but what can you give me in exchange now? The story ending on an ominous note. I speculate that Arlecchino was the girl in the story and Caterpillar inherited these memories through the soul transfer process. The Witch and the Purple Flowers In Greek mythology, one of the most famous gardens was the Garden of the Hesperides, where golden apples grew. The inhabitants were three, four, or seven nymphs, and the serpentine dragon Ladon that guarded the apples. Ladon is based on the constellation Draco, like Lotan or Leviathan, a title associated with Nouvellet. Of particular interest is the name of one of the nymphs, Hestia the Greek goddess of the hearth, equivalent to the Roman Vesta. Let's introduce one more character into the mix for some intrigue, Eris, who was said to have stolen one of the golden apples and used it as the golden apple of discord, inciting the Trojan War. If the theory about Alice being loosely based on Eris holds true, the witch in our story could have been Alice, seeking secret knowledge as she did in Enkonomia with the Dragonbone Orb, created from Dragonbone Flowers. The timing might better align if the witch were one of Remus's seers, like Sibylla, although the overarching theory isn't heavily reliant on the identity of the witch. Regarding the symbolism of purple flowers, they are likely associated with the Abyss, as we see beneath Sumeru on the Thorns, which also appear in the Hexen Circle story teaser. Curiously, the Temple of Vesta is adorned with the carvings of hibiscus flowers, with purple variants symbolizing mystery and knowledge. So, let's go through a potential timeline. The garden was guarded by a hydro dragon, and Arlecchino lived there as a child. Alice or Sibylla arrived and desired something related to mysterious knowledge from the garden, but were refused by the dragon. They tricked Arlecchino into delivering it to them instead leaving her to fend for herself or possibly taking her on as an apprentice. If the witch was Sibylla, it would align well with Arlecchino's journey from being taken in by Remus to rising as one of his harmists. If it was Alice, perhaps the Hexen Circle will play a role in our battle against Arlecchino, much like Nahida did with Scaramouche. So with all of that said, there's one thing I didn't cover yet. Why Arlecchino wants to use the Hydronosis before handing it over to the Tsaritsa. This could be the Black Swan event I mentioned earlier. My guess would be either to get revenge on the witch that tricked her, to restore her body to its original form, or the most dangerous route, the revival of Remoria. Of course this video is just a bit of fun and very speculative, 
But if her backstory is tied to many fascinating stories like Remoria, Nouvellette or his previous incarnation and the Hexen Circle, it'd make for some great lore for us to enjoy. That wraps up the topic for now. I hope you enjoyed our journey down the rabbit hole. Let me know if you have any additional points I didn't mention or any theories of your own as I always appreciate reading them. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to let me know. If not, thank you for watching until the end. Wishing you the best of luck on your wishes and I hope you have a wonderful day.